Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hi guys, welcome back. How's it going? Hi Dar. Dar, you're you're almost always the first to say hello lately. It used to always be Malin. <laughs> hi Hannah, hi Martina, hi Aisha. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. So um, I spent all afternoon. I love that yesterday I'm getting, I, I kind of slipped off of writing my little daily um, to-do list, which is something that is has really helped me <laughs> be less stressed about what I don't get done during the day. It actually makes me feel really accomplished. And I think like that little break I took and a couple of things just kind of threw me off and I thought, oh, I'm doing pretty good. And I was like, no, you're not. You need to keep doing that. I started back up the last couple of days and yesterday, wow, I spent all afternoon after the stream seam ripping and preparing things and um, doing as much as I can without leaving you out and um, it, it took me all day. So it's, it's a lot of work. Ah, sh Judith, hi, welcome back. Happy summer. <laughs> hi, Tammy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Terry, how's it going? I cleaned my glasses, but I think I must have just touched them or something. Let me um, see if I can get rid of that. All right, so what did I do? I'm gonna quickly go over what I did without you guys yesterday, and then we're gonna go to the sewing machine too. I'm gonna to be fixing a lot of these things. So um, all those skirts, they are now fabric. And so if you're kind of wondering like how I did that, like what do you cut and what don't you cut? So for this one here, this was that little one yard skirt. It still kind of looks like it, see? Still has the binding on the hem. I cut it down the one side seam and I cut the waistband off. And so now it's a flat, flat-ish piece of fabric. I left the seam in it because, hey, maybe I can use that in whatever and makes it a bigger piece of fabric. I also left the binding just because it's really not getting in my way. So I just left it there because who knows, it could be a part of whatever I do next. What if I did something that has a little, needs a little binding hem, right? So I did that on both of my um, one yard bias skirts. Here's the other one. So same, same thing. Those are both fabric for the pajamas. That was a little trickier. Obviously these weren't ideal to turn back into fabric, but like I explained, this fabric is very sentimental to me. <clears throat> and if you, the lakeside pajama top is a very interesting pattern. So these are, these are the backs. And here's the side seams, there's the front, and there's darts. And so what I did, I just, I just trimmed off. Ah, oh, I'm glad, Judith. Well, I know you're really busy, so it's nice to have you here. <laughs> and no worries. Um, so I just trimmed off all the binding. 
I left the hem as well. This one I feel like I could trim off and make it more relaxed. They're French seams. I could, maybe I could use this, but it's a bigger piece of fabric, somewhat flat. The shorts were a little trickier. So here's one short and I left, I left the center seam. I kind of trimmed off the crotch to make it a little more usable. Like I said, it's totally a sentimental fabric. I would use this probably in something like a little, um, something that would probably stay at my house. <clears throat> like a, you know, like a little quilt or something like that. I, this fabric though, okay, so what I didn't mention about this is this project was done through Spoonflower when they used to have sprout patterns. Does anyone know about sprout patterns? And you could print the pattern directly on fabric in the, any print that you wanted on Spoonflower. It was actually really great. And if you layered, you know, like when you got your order, you could actually put in a layer of fabric in and cut two out or three out. It was really awesome. And it, they did, it didn't continue on. They did it for a few years. And I, I have like really, really good reason why it didn't. It's because they picked super beginning friendly patterns. And I know that there, there's a great appeal for that, but personally, if you're spending that much on a project, because they weren't cheap, right? You're getting spoonflower fabric plus a pattern and it's custom printed in your size and everything like right onto the fabric, you are probably gonna be less inclined to spend that much if you're a beginner. I think they should have focused on more advanced sewing um, patterns, but I'm sure that would have been a tough sell. So. But whatever this was, they don't have this anymore. It, it is similar to what they have now. It's like a little lightweight poplin. I love it. I love it. So those were those pajamas. Okay, so the pleated skirts, I had two pleated skirts. So once I cut the waistband off, look at how gigantic this piece of fabric is. It's folded in half. So I removed all the pleats. I did a ton of seam ripping. They were gigantic pleats. There were lots of them. And now it's just ready to use. Like I, I, I encourage you to get it as ready as possible so you're more encouraged to use your fabric. Yeah, right, Tammy, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like something for the home that sticks around, you know, something I see, you know. I left the ribbon, it's on there flat, it's not a seam. You never know, right? I mean, it's a, it's a funky fabric, <laughs> but I just always liked it. And then this one too, this one was pleated. And look at this gigantic piece of fabric I have now. Um, this one I actually left in a circle, I guess. Yeah, I did. But yeah, once I took out the pleats, it's just a straight piece of fabric. So yeah. And then same with this Marimekko fabric. I, this one was more of a shaped skirt. And so I just cut off the side seam cut out the zipper. I, I salvaged two invisible zippers yesterday. All the others were elastic. So I, I, I think I only had to throw away one zipper because I nicked it and, with my seam ripper because it was really tight where they had um, applied it. Or maybe it was one I had sewn. That's very likely. Hi, Emily. Howdy. How's it going? So um, yeah, so that's the skirts. And then the linen knit dress, I cut the bodice off and I kind of just left it because I don't really know how usable this piece is. So I just kind of left it. But then the skirt, you know, I got the waist off. It's a bit pretty big piece. It has this one pocket. It was the worst fabric for a pocket. I don't know what was going on with my serger, but it's pretty terrible. So now I have this pretty big piece of fabric here. And I'm really glad because this linen knit, like I said, it's kind of hard to find. And when I see it, I'm always tempted to buy it, but it stretches like a Dickens. Like it stretches out. So you gotta be really careful if you use it for things. Have you, if you've ever sewn with hemp, you kind of know what I mean. I used to sew a lot with hemp because it was um, at the fabric store I worked at. This was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And um, I would make my husband shirts from it. And when I would do that collar collar stand, <laughs> oh my God, it was like wrestling a, a ferret because it was by the, like, even if I put a stay stitch in it, I'd be like, all right, let's see how this is going to go. <laughs> and I get to it and I'm like, wow, your 
literally almost two inches bigger now. How am I going to put you on there? So it was kind of, it was kind of like, um, you really had to treat that fabric special. I love the way it washes. Like the hemp cottons, um, they just get lovelier and lovelier and lovelier. They last forever. They're stronger than linen, you know? But they stretch out, they relax more than linen does, so. All right, this one here, we're gonna do this in a little bit. I'm gonna cut this into one of the Luna Loungewear camisoles with self-binding, so I'm gonna sew that with you guys. Hi, Eliza. Libby, present and accounted for. Hi, Libby. How's it going? <laughs> All right. So I thought I almost had enough to make my pockets for my Rita shirt dress um, out of this fabric, but I would have, I would have been kind of shortchanging the pocket, and I decided not to do that. So I used my cutaway pocket pattern that the Patreon folks have, and I just used the bottom and the facing. I used the facing in this fabric because I just had such little fabric. And then I cut a different pocket bag. No one will see that. They'll just see my facing. So we're going to sew that up. Put my pattern away. I removed the uh, seam here. Of course, it's all French seam. Don't you just love how much I loved a French seam? Not right now. So that's ready. And then I have my Yanta overalls ready. I didn't need to do anything. I probably should iron those. That's probably what I need to do with those. Okay, so for my pillow, I had that funky pillow from my daughter's old set. Um, I just ripped the fabric off because look at this thing. It's sewn into the perimeter. Isn't this crazy looking? Luckily she didn't use this much, so I don't feel like it's very, you know, like dirty or anything. And then this is, that knit print swatch, it's looking a little ratty, but you know what? It's okay. It's kind of sentimental. And I, I decided to cut some of my pearl fabric for the back just because if you're a knitter, you, you know this is funny. <laughs> so the front of my pillow will be knit and the back of my pillow will be pearl. And I'm going to piece it together like that. <laughs> So yeah, that's ready to go. I'll probably just sew that and, and, um, and I, I haven't cut this down yet. I have to cut a little bit off. I'm going to wait until I'm about to sew it so that I can secure those edges. So that's ready to go. All right. So for my little fake Liberty of London blouse here, I had drafted this so that it had a one piece facing here. So meaning um, the center front, this is the back collar, back facing right here. But right here, this is the center front, like right here. And then this facing folds over like that. And then the collar would get sewn into here. So I removed all that, watched a good movie, did a lot of seam ripping yesterday. I removed my collar and um, I cut some interfacing for it. I'm gonna perk it up a little bit. And then I trimmed off a little bit, like about three eighths of an inch. It's not much, but it's enough to make this collar doable because the collar was just way too 70s for this style. I'm, I'm not a big 70s fan anyway. All right, lastly, well not lastly, but in this bin, this little top, this is a repeat offender. And like I described on Instagram, I don't really know how else to say it without, I mean, it's mildly offensive. This top before I started refashioning it the first time was white mom hoochie. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but it was, it really was just so, it was like this wide and super like weird and it is it would be really cute on some folks but oh man this style is really popular around here amongst a certain clique of people and there are definitely cliques of people in this certain areas of this region that I never fit into and so I bought it because I was like I don't know I don't even want to go into it um, and it was really expensive, but I love, I love all the detail in the fabric, you know, like this, this, this is like a mesh up here with this, um, kind of embroidery going on. And this is obviously all embroidered. It's pretty elaborate. It's kind of that, um, you know, kind of a, 
I don't know. It, it, I don't really know how to describe it. The shop is very interesting that sells the, these this style. <laughs> anyway, I found my scraps. I actually had my scraps from the first time that I tried to rescue this top. And I unpicked all this. So I did a, um, the, the knit looks like a linen knit. I mean, if you look at this linen knit piece, it was huge. And I, it looks like I pieced together right here or maybe, oh no, that was how it was. So it had this little weird little flounce, you know. So I'm just trying to make it more like a t-shirt that has a little bit of a flounce. So this is, I cut this piece here and I'm going to piece it together. It goes right into the sleeve. See this little sleeve I cut and sewed last time out of the fabric, trying to match kind of where this embroidery goes. And when it's on, it looks okay, you know. Um, but this is going to sew right here. This is gonna hem back and it's gonna match up just like that. That's my plan. <laughs> on each side, I have one for each side. So we'll see. That'll be my last, this, this is definitely the last time I'm trying to fix this. Okay, so there's that. All right, I, that's not really gonna fit. Okay, so this Amy Louise shift, this is the one I probably did the most work on that you might be interested in, but I didn't quite finish it because I want you, wanted you guys to be a part of it. So this was a kind of, it was supposed to be, a shift in my opinion means it's a dress, right? It's a, it's a short dress, it's a, but it's a dress. You can wear it standalone. This was definitely not long enough to do that in my opinion. So it was in this really awkward length and it had a belt, which you can maybe see was stitched straight here. Uh, this is a casing. So here is, my camera hates this fabric, so we're looking at it inside out. So there's a casing right here, and it was right here, and a little belt, and, and it looked kind of cute on and everything, like that wasn't my problem. My problem is that this pattern, um, the, the, it, this probably works really well on the designer. A, a couple of her patterns are drafted this way where there's no ease in the sleeve. And they look really cute on her. I really need a lot of ease in my sleeve because I have a pretty full bicep. I'm also broad shoulder, my shoulders are straight across, you know, so I can't, I, it, it's same with grain line. Grain lines, I need like a deeper armhole. You know, there's just certain things with certain patterns you just always need the same changes for. I just couldn't wear this. When I would wear it, what would happen is because there was no ease across the sleeve, the whole garment would sit above my shoulders like this <laughs> because it had no place to go. It was looking for the smallest place, right? Because it wasn't big enough to go around here. It would be fine if I stood there. But as soon as I started moving around, you'd see like my whole neckline would be like this. You know, it was really weird. And so I couldn't really wear it. Not to mention that it wasn't long enough to be a shift and not short enough to be a top. So I would be wearing it with jeans or pants and that was just, it was just a little too much for this. So. I'm gonna back off the dart a little bit because also the dart comes right here, front and center. And then the other funny thing about this is that it has, um, I, not funny in, in that um, it didn't work out, but the funny, funny in that now that I'm changing it, it's gonna make it kind of weird. It had cutaway pockets and so I just cut straight through it. So I have cut the sleeves off of this. I just cut the armhole right off, right there. Um, I've added back darts because it also does this crazy thing in my lower back, which most garments do. It's not this garment's problem. Um, and like I am overhauling this thing to make it work. Um, backing off the darts. I'm going to remove this tunnel here, but I can do that later. And I cut it off. There's one other thing. What am I doing? Well, I'm going to fill in the armholes here. I think that's about it. Back off the dart, new hem. Look at that hack job there. <laughs> I thought I got that kind of straight. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, and and it, yeah, I'm gonna fill in the armhole because it's meant for a sleeve and that means the armhole's gonna be too deep to wear as a sleeveless garment. I'm gonna have to fill this in, which is not ideal, I admit. So I'm gonna try and do that kind of strategically 
by opening it up, laying it flat. Maybe I'll just look at it like this. And kind of putting a little gusset in there to kind of fill in this armhole and make it a little shallower right here. So that's my plan with that. So I'm gonna work on that at the table before. I, I might, we'll see. I have so many things I can work on at the machine today that maybe I'll divide this up and do this on Saturday so we can spend more time with it. Same with this one. All right, so this dress, it's so cute. I love how it came out. Um, I did a really nice job sewing it, if I say so myself. It's all bound, um, French seams. I even put in um, French seam, side seam pockets with the midriff and with an invisible zipper on both sides, which I had never, did I do it on both sides? No, I just did it on one side, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know what it is. The dress I was wearing was the exact same dress as this one. I have no idea why this one didn't fit. I have made this dress at least three times. I have a blue one with white arrows on it, a Japanese fabric with little cats hidden inside the flowers. It's really cute. Um, the one I wore yesterday, I feel like I made a fourth one, but this might be what I'm thinking of. This is the Dahlia dress by Colette Patterns, and it's the sleeveless version. So if you go and look at the pattern, it is the sleeveless version. You never see it without it, and um, I just kind of lucked out that it worked. I love it. It's really comfortable to wear. It's really flattering. It has full coverage, kind of like that. The bra situation is a little unique. Sometimes I wear strapless. Sometimes I wear um, like an old school jog bra. Uh, but you could, in some cases, get away without wearing one for some folks. And I, by lining the bodice, I was going to give that a try. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a little risky for me. <laughs> so I ripped it all apart here. I can actually put this dress on and it fits through here all fine. It's just right here. Hi, Angela. How's it going? It doesn't fit me. I can't zip it up. And so I've got my scraps here. I don't have much. I cut this fabric on the cross screen and, you know, Libby brought that up, you know, like, was it that? The thing is, Cutting your fabric on the wrong grain can change the way it feels when you're wearing it and, and the fit. It can also change like how a collar and collar stand go to the neckline, you know, like one way is a little easier than the other. Hi Sue, good evening. But if it's just resting on the table and I took off my dress yesterday and I laid it on top of this one, it came to like here. Like if I lined it up from side seam to here, it was like an inch and a half different, which is like three inches. That's a lot. It wouldn't have done that. So I'm not sure why it did that, I, what, what happened. I haven't gotten the pattern out to see. My challenge with it is that it's fully lined and French seamed. So this is the outside, this is the actual inside and see, look, it's fully lined here. So I may have to take out, I took out this waist seam over here. So this one's gonna be a bit of a project, but I'm determined to wear it. it it's so pretty, it's brand new, <laughs> you know? And I think I'm just gonna have to do a gusset on the side. And I'm just a little worried because of this blue. I don't have much of the blue. So, hi Lynn, how's it going? So that's my thinking. Let's put a little gusset, you know, there I could probably use some of that right there and then maybe, maybe even make a seam here. Yeah, so I think I'll have enough to do it. It's going to be, it's just not going to be, it's not going to look as nice, which is kind of a shame, you know. This is right here. This isn't even surged. So that, oh, no, because that was a, oh, that's interesting. Look at that. This is a French seam to here. I know this was a French seam. Oh, this is where the zipper was. Okay, that's why. So yeah, that one's gonna take a bit of work, but I think it'll be worth it. So I'm determined. It's been in my office since the day I made it. I went and tried it on and I was like, what the what? I know, the fabric is incredible. It's one of those fabrics that came in some really interesting colors. Um, one of them is the fuchsia and purple colorway. So the dark bits were this really dark pur purple. And then the middle was this bright fuchsia. 
There was a black and white. There was another colorway. Was it like yellow and green or something crazy like that? I can't remember. I would walk by this fabric at the fabric store all the time, so tempted, and I was just like, those fab, the colors though. <laughs> these, that, these colors are kind of crazy. I mean, they're not too crazy, but they, I just was like, could I, like this is fine, you know? But yeah, so this is a little piece of leftover binding right here. It's all I had left. So that's why I don't have a lot of the blue. I cut it all up into binding to bind the bodice, so. All right, so I'm going to work on, these two need a bit of construction. Yeah, right, Sue, it was worth it. And it and it was kind of, I feel like I remember it was this one that, was it this one or that scout tee I did with the embroidered cotton from Hearts? It was definitely strategic in how I cut it out. It is, it's, cotton, it's from Art Gallery. It's just an Art Gallery cotton. Pretty sure it's Art Gallery. Oh, it's Allison Glass. Everyone commented on Instagram, love that Alice in Glass fabric, and they're right, it's Alice in Glass, so um, I think she designs for Art Gallery. It's a, it's a nice fabric, though, for clothes, you know? So those two still need a little bit of work. All right, that is my pile so far. So, and this is, I'm gonna cut this out. So this is this weird jammy top my mom gave me. And um, I'm gonna turn it into a jammy camisole. And so at least we'll get to sew one of these because I've only uploaded a video on uh, this. I haven't sewn it live with you, so that'll be kind of fun. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use, like I know this thing, this is so funny. This pattern is so much bigger, but that's so weird. This shirt is really loose on me. I think I'm gonna cut off these sleeves here. The sleeves are just like, look at this, they're just super fuzzy. <laughs> what happened to their fabric? This is not a high quality shirt, you guys. This is just my way of not throwing it into the landfill and um, it's not donatable. It's rude to donate clothes that are junk. Sorry, I'm gonna be blunt about that, but it is. And, um, and also putting the burden on donation facilities to pay to dump your dump like stuff that we send them that's not good. So this is my way of salvaging the fabric because the body is actually still in really good shape and it's really soft. I wouldn't mind sleeping in this and I love stripes. I think what I'm gonna do, maybe what I'll do is I'm just going to copy the top. I'm gonna leave the bottom I'm gonna copy the top. Yeah, like that. But I was hoping to use this, the hem, to for my binding. So let's see if I can get enough binding here. This is pretty, <laughs> I'm definitely being cavalier. Let's, let's do it inside out. Yeah, right Eliza? Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, that pink was, that was kind of a stretch for me, don't you think? And that thing just didn't fit. I, when I see people that can wear the Cali shirt, the Cali um, shirt dress, they are, their bodies are just not my body. And the way the back is constructed, it, I always say this, I know, but it makes it, I feel like I have a pillowcase for a back. <laughs> it just is really unflattering. It makes me look hump, hunchback. I don't really need any more of that to make me look that way. These stripes though, is this risky? Definitely is risky. I, I don't want my stripes to be all funkorama, you know? But they are sewn at the side seams, so we'll just utilize that. I'm gonna put this right here. Let's do it. This is the Love Notions Luna Loungewear set and it comes with all of these patterns in it. 
very useful. I just did a video on sewing this without the bra and I gave a lot of options on how to sew it, uh, how to finish the top. It's fast. Like if you're not teaching a video on how to do this, I, I could sew a camisole in, a, in like 10 minutes. Yeah, it's poofy in the bag, but comfortable. And you know, I think it's just really that it's a look, right, Eliza? Like maybe I should just suck it up and go for the look. All right, this isn't quite enough of the... So I need to find a fabric that will be good for the binding. I do have fold over elastic, but I don't like sleeping in that. Um, let's see what I have here. I feel like I have a blue, solid blue. If I have this, that would be so hard to sew, but it would be soft. This is like a lightweight French terry, but look at that. It coordinates really nicely, huh? So this could go in my dog bed scrap bin. It's soft and gushy, dogs will like that. Shorts look low waisted. What's that? What do you mean, Eliza? All right, so this we'll put here and then let's cut some cross cut binding. This is this, um, it's Heather. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. If you want super, super soft, it's like a brushed, <sighs> they, I think it's called French Terry, but you guys, it's so much lighter weight than that. It's more like a brushed um, interlock or, or jersey, but with a lot of stretch, a lot of stretch, not in the length, mostly in the width. Hearts Fabric has this in so many colors and it's so scrumptious. I made a, a what's that sweatshirt called? Linden sweatshirt? And I, and I love it. It's actually here at the shop. I don't really like the way I colored it because I use this as the body and the white as the sleeves, but I love wearing it. <laughs> oh, these shorts. They do, but you know what? I don't think they're as short as they look. And there are, um, this, this um, pattern company is so good at showing photos of their designs on so many bodies and body types and sizes. So if you're kind of curious, what's that gonna look like on me? Um, I would go to the Love Notion site and check it out. This was one of, some, one of you guys tell me, it might've been Beverly that said, hey, um, they do a, um, so she recommended the men's, the men's um, pullover we just did, the North Star hoodie. And they, if you sign up on their newsletter, they every Friday have a $5 pattern. So tomorrow there's gonna be a $5 pattern. This was a $5 pattern. So I felt like it was worth it for the camisole. <laughs> That's great, Eliza, yeah. I didn't need a pattern to have a, for a camisole. That's the, that's the weird thing about what I do here as a live streamer. I could just draft that really quick, right, with one of my blocks. But the thing is, I really want you guys to be able to go, I don't want to draft that. I just want to be able to buy it. And so that's why I try and pick things. Yeah, and then $5 Friday. And so that's why I just went that really frugal way because I'm trying to save money too because I don't need all these patterns. But I love doing it. I love sewing all these different patterns too. All right, so let's just uh, do some of this binding. And I'm just gonna use my ruler because these pieces are on the fold. So we need we need uh, nine and a half by like one and a half plus. and 19 and a half. Okay, and we need two each of these. This will be nice. It's very, very much in, on par with that fabric. It's very, it's very gushy and fuzzy and stretchy. Sorry, it's so dark on there. 
just cut this off. It rolls like a Dickens. <laughs> I just recorded a video on all lots and lots of different types of knit fabrics and what you're looking for and stuff, but it's gonna take me a bit to edit it. This, this week's streams are a lot of work. I'm just gonna cut two long strips and then cut off what I need. So I need two that are nine and a half, two of those, that's the little front part that goes right here and then, ooh, you love to see it. There we go, there's one. That's the arm, and then for these arm, you have to mark this little star here. Because that's where your strap begins and ends going over your shoulder. What is the super bendy ruler? This right here. You're the second person to ask me this lately. Um, I think it's linked in the description. I'm really sorry if it's not and I'm lying about that. And at least it's in, and it might be an affiliate link. But at least it would show take you to what it is. This is a 2 inch by 18 inch um, what I call a see-through ruler and meaning it's a letter C dash T H R U. That's what they've always been called. And I think they might be called something different. I think they sold. And so right here on it, it says um, Westcott. <laughs> See that? This is, uh, I've been using these since 1989. <laughs> and I love the style of ruler for pattern drafting. It, it's, um, and they've gotten better and better because before, this eighth inch that runs along this edge used to always be narrower than the one that runs on this side. This side would be bigger. It was like how they stamp cut them. But that was kind of helpful. You could use the narrower one to draw an eighth inch and the, your pencil line would make up the rest, you know? So I love it because you can do parallel stuff and it's just perfect for seam allowances. I know everyone's got these like weird things, putting magnets on their things and I just don't do that. I use my ruler. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I think I marked the star on that other one in the wrong spot, didn't I? I might have because I had put the fold on that cut edge. It's already curling. This is gonna be such a pain in the butt. My biggest rule when you're doing this kind of thing is sew it right away. So maybe I will sew this today, we'll see. If your fabric curls, don't cut it until right before you sew it. Just be kind to your future self. Oh, that's that's in the right spot. Great. Okay. So now we have these. Um, my other little tip is you can do this. You can lay them down and put your ruler on top. <laughs> Oh, there you go. You can get it from Waywack. Oh, you can get it in centimeters. It is in the description. Thanks. Yeah, I used to have a blue one. The blue uh, is is kind of cool. Like it was a nice change of pace. It just doesn't show up as well as the red on a lot of the things. There's something about it. Which is weird, because you would think red would be a little harder to see. This is how you tame it until you're ready to sew. <laughs> Hi, Lydia. How's it going? <laughs> you always end up seeing, yeah, just use what works for you. That's what I think, too. I I'm all about cool gizmos. I think it's just finding what works for you. Um, this one I think will be okay like that. All right, so let's go sewing. So, and all the other things I did yesterday, I put those four items in the donate. So I only ended up with four items, which is great. That one blue sleeveless top with the with the like lace um, cutout here, I ended up putting that 
in the donate bin, but I took something out of the donate bin. What was it? Was it the yellow top? Was it the yellow top maybe? I don't know. And then these are the things I need to ruminate on more. Okay, so I have this oil lily sweater, which you know what I forgot to tell you guys is that there is a character in that Netflix series, Sex Education, which is a really great series. Um, I love it. It's really sweet. Um, she's wearing this exact same oil lily thing. And uh, it's a little different. It, it's classic oil lily, though. It has, like, the contrast sleeves and stuff like that. I have this sweater. I'm definitely reworking into something that my husband had bought me. It just doesn't fit weird. Okay, and this, I ended up Googling this because look at this label. This label is definitely not a, uh, like, budget brand. And it's, her name is Yoana Barashi. Um, so I thought maybe I should just donate that. This I need to rework. And these two. I, I'm just not sure, you guys, about cutting these up or reworking them or what to do with them. I don't wear them. This I'm saving. And then the skirt that I had made with all of my students' line names, I hung on the wall. So I'll show you a picture of that sometime. <laughs> right, Lydia? That's awesome. <laughs> so I need to do with that. And then the other things went into my bin down here that I want to draft patterns from. I'm going to just try and work on that and chip away at it. At least get it down onto a pattern and hang it up on the rack behind me. All right, let's sew. Let's sew. So let's see, I need to move over there and I need to carry a bunch of this stuff over too. Got my bins. I need to move the computer. It's, ooh, that's really dark, huh? Let me get my mouse. I'll bring, well, I'll just leave that there for now. sure it's bright enough. <laughs> All right, let's do this pillow here. Woohoo, Lynn, that's awesome. <laughs> I said it's great. All right, let's see here. Let's see. Do we want to brighten that up just a little bit? All right, this ugly pillow form. All right, so I have cream thread on. That'll be for the most part okay. I brought a purple over though, so maybe I'll use that since I do have a purple bobbin. So how's your machine, Lynn? Is it fixed? I think I remember when you said you, you were sending it. What was going on with it? You know, remember when I used the white top stitch thread on my Peaks and Valley pants? I think that that wasn't top stitch thread. I was fooled because, yeah, it's called Mara. This, it's totally, it's, it's even a different 
So this one right here says Mara 70, and this is um, number tw oh, 12. Yeah, so 70 is the um, really close to the weight I use for like the, these threads here, but um, not as heavy as that 12. I thought maybe I didn't turn it on, but I, I distinctly heard the little beep. There we go. Oh, that's awesome, Eliza. Okay, so let's see. I pieced this together so that I didn't have the a repeat line of the pearl. Now that I'm getting better at um, designing fabric, like <laughs> I'm really not great still, but um, I am getting better at it. I think I've learned some tips that I can make my knit print truly seamless, which I know if anybody regularly buys it, they're gonna be so happy to hear that. Why does this sound so weird? Do you guys hear that? It's kind of wiggly too. What's up? Uh, oh yeah, it's not even. I, I have trouble keeping this one in the tension disc. Oh, wow, Lynn. It must, does it feel different then? Does it feel better? Oh, well, that's just too light. You've been servicing yourself. There we go. That's better. I think I'll top stitch this. So this knit swatch has been kicking around my studio for almost 10 years. Hi, Sydney, how's it going? I know that seems like, I can't believe I've lived here this long. That's nuts. But I did it shortly after moving here. Maybe, maybe it was a couple of years. And so maybe I've had it for eight years. I feel like something's vibrating. Sometimes when, you, when I cut patchwork, I get a little not straight. So. so I just pieced these pieces together. I didn't have anything big enough. <laughs> it's so busy. <laughs> oh, it looks a little crooked, doesn't it? It'll be fine on a pillow. <laughs> it's still in the trunk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> okay. It's a little fuzzy in the middle, a little cleaner here. My friend Kirby knit this for me. She was, I was so busy at the time that I was just like, I gave her a bunch of things. I was like, I have this idea for a fabric. Um, and she knit the, this is a whole skein of yarn. It's a very chunky yarn. Oh, really, Sydney? Yeah, I don't know what you do, Sydney, but you said that it's been really busy. I'm sorry to hear it. What I have learned when you do pillows, I am not an expert in making pillows, but what I have learned on my short time on earth is don't start at the corner like start away from the corner, leave your opening away from the corner. It's so much easier to turn under an opening that's between corners than at the corner. Ah, oh, welcome Angel Cat. Angel Cat or Angela? Angela Cat? Ange oh my goodness, that's gonna get stuck in my head. <laughs> Let's reduce the pressure. It's too, it's really thick. Have you ever sewn your knitting? So uh, admittedly, I could be getting this not perfectly straight and it would be really nice to kind of get this straight. And by that, I mean, um, 
in the lines of the knit. We'll see. <laughs> Can you see how chunky it is? Let's put a few pins in. Look at that, just pulling down there. It's like sinking in. <laughs> so I have these, um, this is so funny that I'm doing this because I, I uh, y'all know my daughter moved out recently and, you know, we're trying to, um, like, incorporate her cat into our lives. Look at it, look at, uh, do you, can you see this? Look at how far away from the edge there it is. Do I pull it to match? I think I'm going to so that it looks straight. That seems kind of risky. Um, so my daughter had these kind of elaborate uh, bed systems on her little porch for him. And he loves this one in particular and it's an old rattan chair. And there is a fuzzy blanket in the seat of the chair with a cat bed on top of it, plus a old fleece jacket, her old blanket. Oh, and, and uh, two pillows, which I, that's why I'm telling the story. And then over the whole thing, the whole chair, there's a tapestry, like those thin hippie tapestries. And then, um, and on the hippie tapestry, that's where the little like blanket and cat bed are sitting on top of the chair. And so, uh, and Ollie loves being under this chair. Like he, it's like a little cave fortress for him. Do you see all the slack I'm getting because I pulled it? All right, so I'm gonna leave that there. Was that a mistake, you think? So anyway, under I was like, what is under here? He wasn't in there, so I was like, I'm gonna investigate. I wanna see what did Cricket steal from the house to give to this cat that she didn't even know at the time. And I um, found two pillows that I had Tunisian crocheted in actually this yarn, but a different colorway. It was this beautiful turquoise. And then I sewed these pillow backs for it. And they would sit on our couch. They were really pretty. They were under Ollie's bed. <laughs> she literally had stolen my handmade crochet, Tunisian crocheted pillows. I had wondered where those things went and then I forgot about them. done now, eh? Yeah, it's an elaborate kitty setup. I'm going to leave this uh, finished edge right here since I'm near the opening. And probably secure this uh, knitting. Look at that. Isn't that satisfying? Ooh, it's like a cross section of knitting. Let's uh, secure this. Stuck on there, there we go. What is vibrating down here? If you've knit a sweater, oh, there's no way I'm getting that in there. Oh my God, Sarah me. If you knit a sweater and it doesn't fit, I'm here to tell you, you can sew it until it does. I hope I can, um, <laughs> maybe I should secure this a little more. <laughs> it looks good on this side. Nothing but the best for a stray cat, indeed. He loves it, he's always in there. Um, I just feel like right now we're going a little over the top to, you know, keep him around. We're not going over the top. I shouldn't say it that way. It's more that um, 
I'm not sure he really cares a whole lot. Like he's gonna be there either way. And my husband and I haven't slept in the same bed since before we moved my daughter away. <laughs> like we're taking turns sleeping out there. And um, he's not sleeping in the cottage with us really because I have to keep the door open all night. Otherwise he asks to go in, in and out. So I'm calling it glorified camping. I'm sleeping out in this bare bones room with the door open all night, like physically open. Does not sound like I'm running out of, sound like I was running out of a uh, bobbin thread. All right, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this in there, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna trim these corners a little bit more. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this edge a little more too. I don't really want a ridge on the inside, you know? We're winging it, people. Winging it on and going fast. This isn't an heirloom. Nothing I sew is an heirloom, so I do not treat it as such. My daughter's not gonna be like, oh, I remember when you didn't knit this. <laughs> when your friend knit this. <laughs> It does seem kind of disrespectful to treat the original swatch to that fabric that's really brought me so much, you know? All right, um, this corner too. Oh, I did sew that? Okay. I'm just reinforcing my corners. Why not? Unless the sweat, net sweater's too small. That's true, Lynn, right? Especially if it's a knit, right? Yeah, so you know, Sydney, I've had that problem too. Oh yeah, well, I turn off all the lights too, Nancy, that helps. But, um, and mosquitoes don't bite me. I hate mention, admitting that, but it's true. <laughs> um, and they're not too bad there. We have all these dragonflies that eat them. So, uh, you know what I did for that, Sydney, when I had a sweater? Well, I had one that I was just like, oh, I just don't like this. And a couple that were a little small. I sewed the arms, I, turned, I cut the sleeves off, sewed the arms shut, sewed the collar shut, removed the zipper, sewed the bottom shut, and so it was like this. But like, it looked like little, you know, sleeveless armholes, collar, bottom. And then I threw it in the washing machine and dryer and felted it and gave it to the cats and they loved it. You know, your cats are always trying to sit on your knitting and when they're making bread or biscuits, whatever you call it, on your knitting, that's really bad for it. They can felt it, they can snag it, they can um, pierce and cut the fibers. And so I always gave them beds that were old sweaters and then that way, you know, they thought they were getting away with something. I love how we anthropomorphize them. Oof. This outer, thing is just not very strong. I just, my hand went right through it over here. It already had that cut in it. I have two of these pillows sitting over there. This is one of them. So it's really nice to get rid of one of these too. Okay, we did it. Look at that. It looks so cute. And so normally I would uh, just turn this edge under and edge stitch it with my machine if it was fabric, but because it's this chunky knitting, I'll, I'll hand sew that. That looks really cute though. And it's so soft. Yeah. It finally gets a place in my home. See, that's a good place of respect. Next. <laughs> All right, let's sew the Yanta overalls facing.
So these are actually just, they're perfect. They, they just have this facing that I have to iron. It, it may be in the instructions that you stitch down the facing. I don't remember. It, it is definitely something I normally would do. Like I love stitching things, but I think I opted not to because I did a contrast thread that's green. And didn't I, didn't I stitch it you guys? And then I was like, oh yeah, that's too much. And we took it out. Maybe that's what happened. So this is me putting it back because maybe if these were just like a, a linen or a cotton and I had to iron them anyway, but the fact that they're denim and they're like my gardening overalls when I'm pretty much doing nothing in the garden but drink iced tea because my garden is dangerous. Um, I wear these, I, I like wearing these at home and I don't wanna have to iron my overalls in order to wear them. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to get, oh, thankfully that's my pocket. So we're just gonna go from here all the way around. Hi, Ray. <laughs> so with the second one, nah, I could barely get that in there. In fact, I scratched my boo-boo here. Hi, Harmony, how's it going? Yeah, it's Malabrigo. <laughs> Yeah, right, Ray? I know. I'm not a big pillow person, but um, that will, that'll be great. I removed it when you weren't watching. That's it. You're right, Lynn. I think I like, I'm sorry, my nose is really bugging me today. Um, I think I remember that now, too. Yeah. Okay, so where can I put this? I think I'll just put that back stitch right there and it'll be fine. I'm also going to stitch this down with some hand stitches. So I'm just going to put that right there. This definitely needs it. Like no one really wants to iron their overalls, especially denim. Ironing anything denim feels like we're kind of doing life wrong. Um, all right, I'm going to be going through this pocket. This pocket might be my own addition. Did I add the cutaway pockets, you guys? I did, right? Should have ironed it first, but I have so many things I want to get to today. Oh, this is barely there. Try harding a little bit. <laughs> I want to see how this went here. So I stitched through the, my pocket, but see, it doesn't really matter because my pocket, this is the, where the facing is. A little dark, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a little a bit of a battle, Ray. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, though. It was, it was enough of a battle to make me appreciate it, you know? All right. Yeah, no more ironing for this gal. Look at that. Pretty much invisible because I used matching thread. You taking off Judith? See ya. Okay, cool. Nice to see you. Anyone gets a follow request from a name that looks sort of like mine? It's not me. Report it, please. Oh, okay, Sydney. Is that on Instagram or something? That's weird. That's. I'm sorry you're going through that. That's a bummer. Um. All right. So let's stitch this down here. No project left undone. This is one trick I learned when I used to work. Um, I didn't work there. I had my office in this uh, building and they, it was like an incubator. And so lots of people could rent out like-minded 
businesses could rent out offices there in the um, garment, textile, sewing, all, all, it was a huge umbrella of things. And there was this uh, freelance cooperative of Hmong women that would hand sew and embellish things, uh, especially for this company called Hot Knots. And one thing I learned from them is they thread, they get so much hand sewing done. It's incredible watching them. And they will thread their needle sometimes like this with this many strands of thread, like that's eight strands. And, the, and so then they're only doing like two passes. I find it a little hard because I don't have, they like, you know, they have like, they got the perfect needle and all that. And so sometimes I have, like, there's no way I'm getting that in there. Let's see if I have a bigger eye needle. I finally did buy a new package of them. Maybe it's at home. Maybe I'll just use one of these. I have, this is really old, but these aren't sharp, these are blunt. I have these and I'm just gonna tell you straight up, I do not recommend these. I was so excited to get, to find these needles. They're side threading, so there's like a little slot in them. And it, it is really easy, but the, the top just breaks off. Uh, they are fragile and they are not good. Sorry, needle lady, I thought this was genius. But I've even done really delicate stuff and the top, they, it frays my thread and, and it like creates a weird little like frayed like section because it starts slipping, it catches on that little side slot. And then eventually if you tug it all, like you, you get something, you're like, oh, I have one strand and you tug a little bit, that top will break off your needle. Do I have my live chat on, on Instagram? I do have my live cha chat on. Oh, on Instagram. Oh, I didn't see it right underneath. Dude, I'm doing a lot here, Sydney. Give me a break. No. <laughs> <Just teasing. laughs> um, so yeah, anyway. I know I was really excited when I first discovered those, but kind of a bummer. These are really old. Ooh, there's like glue or something? What is that? Oh, it's tied around it. Oh, well, I'm just gonna ignore it. Can I ignore it? That's like, um, fishing line. There you go. It's gone. This was in somebody's, some dear old person's sewing kit and someone gave it to me. First thing I did, turned my live chat on. I forgot to the other day though. All right, so I'm gonna do my, the other method I've learned of threading a needle is you wrap the, the needle with your thread, pinch it really hard. I don't think I can do it with this many. Yeah, I can't do it with this many because you're folding it and you're putting in then double. But I'm pretty sure I can get all these in here. Sometimes licking it is the worst thing you could do. It just makes it thicker. There we go. All that time I saved, uh, kind of worthless now, huh? <laughs> the other thing I've learned is do a slip knot like that. And I'm gonna just try and do this. I should have done this before I sewed the facing. But I went for the easy thing. And now I just made this harder. But I can hide this between the layer of the facing and the outer garment. I just want something to tack this little embellishment I did down because it wings out and I have to iron it too. There we go. Tighten that up so we don't see it. I feel like that one right there, I almost see, or is that just the ribbon? I 
I'm using, um, I have four in there, four strands, but they would do a lot more than that. <laughs> I don't know, Ray. I, I mentioned it once to someone else and they said the same thing, so I don't think so, you know. I could have done a little better job, but. And then I'm gonna pull it through here, pull a little extra hard so then it snaps back in there. There we go. Now my little ribbon trim won't flip up. I like that needle. Yay, yantas are easy to wear now. Bam. All right, what do we have here? I have pockets. Let's do my collar. Um, there we go. Put my chat on. How do I do? <laughs> Where am I? How do I find So So Alive on YouTube? There we go. Oh, yeah, Lynn. Exactly. I do that too. I do like a slip knot. That really helps. So this is a classic ceramic garment. No interfacing. <laughs> I'm going to iron this to kind of make it a little easier to sew. Uh, I do have, I do have buttons and buttonholes in this garment. So I am going to have to work around that and there may be a little bit of finagling. The neckline's already been um, notched, like clipped. This back thing right here is two, this back facing is two layers of fabric. This one isn't though. I like not using interfacing, but I usually use a piece of fabric. I don't know why I didn't even put a piece like behind the buttons and buttonholes here. All right, let's get this prepped. All right, and then the neckline. I'm not sure how I feel about this blouse. It looks a little busy, but it's my favorite blouse style. Just a little darted collared blouse. Something with shape that's not boxy. Like uh, like the archer, you know, I have a ton of archers, but you know, that's a certain look. This is a little bit more um, form, like figure, figure fitting, figure, what do you want, how do I want to say that? It has shape. <laughs> okay. This right here has a, um, collar ray that was it was kind of hard to tell but it it was very 70s and pointy so I took it all off right now it's inside out and look I trimmed off the outer collar edge about three-eighths of an inch so now when it's on it's going to look more like that with minus the seam allowance. Whereas before it was a little more like that, you know? It was a little too much. All right, so I'm gonna add interfacing to one of these. I'll just trim it off a little bit so it doesn't go over the seam allowance.
One thing I do like about interfacing that I underappreciate is that it aids with uh, ironing. You don't have to iron as much if you are stabilizing the fabric with an interfacing. This is a woven interfacing. So it's not Pellon. It's actually fabric with fusible, a fusible side. I thought about adding it to this, but I think that'll be a little too tricky because see, I have my buttons here. Let's kind of just iron this a little bit so that it looks a little better right out the gate, you know? <laughs> I would wear it occasionally and every time I'd be like, oh, I don't know, Rayanne, don't you think the collar is a little too big? She's like, yeah. <laughs> every time I would kind of hope she'd say, no, it's fine. You're just imagining it. But, you know, when in doubt, you guys, you kind of know. If you're asking about anything, no matter what you're talking about, you know, did I park the car okay? It, you probably didn't if you're wondering. <laughs> when in doubt, you know. Your doubt is probably real. I'm stuck over there. There we go. One of my sayings is, when in doubt, don't. You know, if you're like, should I? Blah, blah, blah. I just don't know. You probably shouldn't, whatever it is. I had stitched this to, stitched in the ditch at the collar, seam, or the shoulder seams and everything, so... Clear agreement, yeah. <laughs> this sleeve has way too much ease in it. I'd have to do a lot more work to the garment to remove some of it. All right, uh, anything else? Okay, let's sew this. Yay, we get to sew a collar. It's been so long since we've sewn a collar. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? All right, so I'm gonna continue this perimeter seam here. This is nice, I have the right color thread on. And so quarter inch seam. corner here. And one thing I didn't do when I first sewed this collar was clip this edge. And it really showed on the outside. That's what's going on there. Why do I feel like I have a catch in them now? Look at that little, there's a little thing there. What happened? Hey, Martina, how's it going? How are you doing? Okay. All right, let's turn it to the right side. Oh, there is two layers of fabric in here. Look at that. Well, it wasn't enough. Okay, let me get my all, do my point here, a little better. That's not much better. Okay, 
Uh, this one, this collar was edge stitched. Oh, nice. I think it's now it's a good time to start making things for the cooler weather or maybe the warmer weather if you're in the summer southern hemisphere. Yeah, you know, I think under stitching this collar would look nicer for how busy the print is. Collar's already looking so much better. So let's understitch it. I think I'll just understitch it along this long edge here. It's always a little tricky. Not a big fan of understitching collars just because they're, it's hard, you know? It feels kind of like you're not doing it right. You can't get all the way to the corner. So that also feels like, oh, is that what I'm supposed to do if I can't get all the way to the corner? And yeah, it's just like that. You know, so this is my top collar. Wait a minute. Let's take that out. That was wrong. <laughs> that felt wrong because it was wrong. Just a good thing we figured it out. So understitching is when you press the seam allowance toward the piece you want to stitch it down to. And it's usually the underside of something like a collar um, or a facing. I feel like you see that mostly on things like that, you know, maybe a hem if you were facing the hem, and then you would understitch the piece. And then that way it kind of pulls it to the underside, pull, keeps this whole piece of fabric to the underside of the collar so you don't, it doesn't sneak to the right side. It's particularly helpful if you were doing, say, a different fabric color and you, you, it would be really noticeable if, you know, that f contrast fabric kind of snuck out to the right side of the garment. Um, when you don't want it to like it you know it's nice to have like a collar stand that might be like a different fabric or something for fun but usually it's kind of something that's like a little secret or you get a little sneak of it when the when the neckline is open you don't really want to see it any other time you want it to be on your terms right exactly i totally agree sydney there you go ray I totally agree, Sydney. I really like it when they, and I think that's where almost all instructions fail, <laughs> is when they don't tell you, this is gonna feel weird, or um, you're not gonna make it all the way, or uh, this is really hard, you know, because then you know, oh, okay, I'm not doing it wrong then. All right, so my button is, I could take this button out but I can't take my buttonhole out over here. See, and I didn't, I didn't actually remove the seam all the way, hoping that I can maybe get this together up to that point. Like, I, I think it's kind of hard. Have, have, wait, have been mostly listening and not watching. Is the camera moving when you so if you said it was? You know, um, is it? Yeah, see, it is. I just put in vibration pads and I feel like there's something going on down here. Like there's something is touching. I've been trying to minimize that. So the machine isn't touching the thing that the cameras is on. What's happening is that um, because I put in really nice carpet padding in under my carpets so that it would not be echoey in here and the sound quality would be good, is that what it happens is it makes the you know machine on kind of a gushier surface, but I don't actually think that's what it is. I think what it's doing is it's vibrating the camera. <laughs> So I've been working on it and I got these vibration pads. They actually cost quite a bit, but
but I'm not sure how else to mitigate it, you know, till someone swoops in and says, Sarami, we love what you're doing here. Can we make your setup better? <laughs> and I'd be like, I'd probably be like, no, go away. <laughs> I'm scared. Of, I'm scared. <laughs> what do I have to do? All right, so let's make sure I didn't remove any of my back stitches here at my shoulders. I didn't. I don't want my shoulder seams, you know, pulling apart. All right, and then um, let's find the center of my collar. You love the curved hem. Yeah, I think that um, someone asked for a tutorial on that, and so I've been trying to figure out how to put something together about that because I know I know your pain on that. Um, and when I do them, I'm doing a lot of stretching and easing while I'm doing it, and I don't use a lot of pins. Yeah, exactly, Terry, right? And I think some of it relaxes a bit. All right, so this one was sewn, like I said, with this uh, facing here. This is kind of a problem lately. Yeah, Lynn, I, I don't know about that because I don't like my side seam going through the hem. <laughs> what else you're missing? Nothing, Nancy. <laughs> you missed the winning lottery numbers. <laughs> all right, let's find my center back. I thought I ironed this. Didn't we all see me iron this? Why is it all wrinkly? Oh, I just saw that uh, Frugalissima hit um, over 7,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is really cool. Love it. Love to see it. She's so sweet. I think that's the one good thing that for me came out of doing the Friday sews was meeting like two or three other accounts that um, are friendly, you know? So that I have a few YouTube friends. That's what I wanted, remember? It's what I said I wanted. All right, so let's find my front here. It's going to go all the way up to this edge here. It's going to be really tricky. I'm probably going to end up doing some hand sewing here. We'll do our best. There's a buttonhole right here, so we're just pretending like we can sew past it. I'm just digging out as much. So there's my center front fold, the fold right here along the center front. And this is a buttonhole right here. the Vax Millions. Oh yeah, you could do bias binding for the, the curved hems. That's true. Okay. Let's get this. So usually your collar doesn't go all the way up to that fold line. It goes to the the actual center front, and that's the point at which your um, extensions of your button placket are gonna line up. So if this little knuckle seam right here is your center front, and this knuckle seam was the center front on the left front, they would line up those knuckle seams, right? And so then you have this little bit of extra of your placket sticking out. Um, and then along that center is where all your buttons and buttonholes go. Didn't win, aw. Right, Lydia, I totally agree. She seemed very down to earth. Um, not clickish, which I did kind of start discovering a little bit and I was like, oh, okay. Thought we were all in this together. Maybe not. So this is gonna be a little tricky because I've already clipped my neck, right? So it's relaxed, it's spreading out. But you know, if I pull this up along the edge, along the seam line, it should be fine. 
I've just got to get it all to kind of behave until I get it there. And it's going to be a little tricky. We'll get it. Let's see right there. All right. And usually that point, like where this collar is going, is about, a, it's usually about a half inch. So if you don't know where that was, um, it's usually about a half inch because the overlap of your button placket is usually about an inch to an inch and a quarter. So let's do our non-negotiable spots. I don't know where the shoulder was. I think this, see these right here are clips and this right here, is that folded back on itself though? Oh, maybe that's not then. So I'm not sure where my shoulder notch was on this because there's so many clips in it now. You should have won, Lynn. All right, let's see. Need to raise this side up a little bit. Oh, these are kind of chunky, little chunky pins. This is, you know, when you work doing alterations. Ah, oh, welcome Lynette, thanks for subscribing. I'm getting so close to 10,000 subscribers, you guys. I figured out, it's funny, because you guys are always the ones that tell me, Sarah Marie, did you know that you hit, you know, 5,000? And I'm like, I did? I didn't even know. And I really appreciate you guys keeping me up on that. Now I've been really focused on it, because it seems, it's like such a milestone, right? And I don't think anything really happens to my channel. I think I unlock stories, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but um, I started going, well, gosh, you know, it's kind of cool that it's going to coincide with my three-year anniversary of streaming on YouTube. And then I'm like, well, will it? You know, so I started doing the math. And if I get 10 subscribers a day, I should hit it by my, by my anniversary week. All these edges are so tricky. So yeah, like if you're doing, if you've done alterations before, you know, taking apart someone else's sewing and then putting it back together again is always an adventure. Even your own sewing. Like, what did baby Sarah me do here? You know? Streamlabs is all about those all caps. Woo woo. Yeah, <laughs> you would have run out of room for all the fabric. Well, that's so you would have then been able to, you know, get yourself a bigger sewing room too, Lynette, Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Let's see if we can get this up here. See, this is kind of dropped down a little too far, so let's remove that. Okay. Get there. Now, this isn't really a shirt that I... I button up all the way. Um, I think that kind of gives me a little bit of grace in getting this perfectly back together. I just want to make sure I don't leave out one layer, right? I don't want one of my collar layers to fall short of the seam allowance. I don't want my facing here. Put all this clipped edge here. And then I'll be able to finally start wearing this shirt now that I've corrected that collar width issue. I've had this thing for forever too. Not forever, like eight years. All right, let's see if I can get in here. I'm sewing right above where my button is attached. A little tricky. I'm gonna get going a little bit and then I'm gonna get situated. I always like to do this. I like to kind of get going, get my machine on there so that the machine can be my like helping hand here. I'm gonna use my awl, make sure I get all these little clipped edges. This style collar is called a convertible collar. You don't see them very often, but it is kind of a budget way to put on a collar without doing the collar stand. And it can be a lot less intimidating and easy to sew as well. And a little more casual looking. You're gonna see this on like a um, camp shirt. 
stop that. There we go. Shoulder seams. <laughs> oh, Nancy, I'm not sure we'll see one of those in our lifetime. <laughs> Maybe if I was Mimi G, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's like 100,000. I don't know. I've never looked into it. <laughs> I've thought about like gimmicky ways to do sewing, just basically like sewing eye candy stuff, you know, but I feel like it's just so gimmicky. There's so much um, there. I see sometimes I get suggested sewing videos that are just so, it's so sad, you know? It just makes things look so easy and they skip out so much or it's just very gimmicky, you know? It's like, oh man, we aren't about that life here. Yo, all right, let me get my this is, okay, this is a little tricky. I'm at that center front. So right here, see that, remember, this is my buttonhole right here, <laughs> the inside of my placket. All my buttonholes are in there. Here is the little edge I have to hold. I'm just trying to keep my collar lined up to the raw edges. It feels like it's slipped down a little bit. So let's pull it up with my awl. There we go. And then I can use my awl also to kind of pull this. Look at that, I'm gonna get in there. Yeah, that's the magic. All right, let's look it over on this side. I may have a tuck right there. I can actually scratch that tuck out. Let's see here. All right, we're good. Let's see if our collar is caught. Yeah, right here? Yep, I did, okay, okay. Uh, it's just like, I can see needle holes, so I was a little nervous. Um, let's see this side. Making sure, once you've sewn something and taken it apart, it's just never quite the same, so it's really a good idea to check it over. Okay, um, I'm gonna reclip this neckline. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sewing Nick, that won't help. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm not fishing for compliments. Thank you. It's nice of you. That is definitely what keeps me going is that it's funny because I do definitely have those moments where I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> it's so much work. But it's you guys. I love helping and sewing with you guys and hanging out and I when I get overwhelmed and stressed I just think none of these people are demanding things from me they're not like when are you gonna have that basket pattern done you never ever say that and um, I, it's all me putting the pressure on me not you guys and so then it makes me do like kind of a check-in and I think this is really good to do no matter who you are especially if you're an entrepreneur Always check in, is this still in line with why I do this? Is this still in line with why I do this? Because I, I definitely had all those moments with Chicken Boots, and Chicken Boots was doing really good. Um, I don't think people would have ever thought that I was always like, whoo, but that was so much work, so much more work than this. This is a piece of cake. All right. Let's see, moment of truth. Can I get this out? Come on, come on. going on there it's like a belly button oh there we go okay stick it all in there and straighten it out look at that I did it with the with buttonholes there and everything I'm kind of surprised I thought I would be doing some hand sewing on this for sure Let's see can we get that in there yeah we did okay Okay, I just had a uh, like <laughs> P 
panic that I did the under collar update. So there we go. Now we have our new collar. Yay! Aw, Penny, that's amazing. You would have found someone else. <laughs> someone would have been awesome. There's so many amazing sewists out there. That really makes me feel good though. I'm really glad that I help you that much. Just go for it. All right, so now I'm just kind of laying it here and thinking, okay, do I wanna do probably uh, um, secure my facing to the shoulder seams here? Cause that's how it was before. So let's just give it a little iron. That's awesome, you guys. I know the funny thing is, is how many people say, oh, I was always so scared to use my seam ripper cause I thought it was like a bad thing to do, but are you kidding? It's like my favorite tool in the world. Seam Ripper for life. Seam Ripper Club. Yeah, I think that this also was uh, top stitched around the neckline, which is a little unconventional, but not, not that unconventional. I'm trying to iron it, but I'm not sure if I can iron this. It's kind of tricky without a real ironing board. But I can put the facing to the shoulder here. We can either stitch in the ditch or do it the other way. <laughs> Bye soon. Thanks for coming. That's awesome. When I don't usually sew buttonholes though. You you probably gave yourself that confidence. That's awesome, Eliza. Okay, you guys, stop, just stop. <laughs> it's just sewing. <laughs> That's the other thing though. I really gave myself for years a really hard time about, like, I think um, you know, the world devalues sewing, right? We all know that. It, the world devalues sewing on so many levels. They make it super cheap to buy things. Um, People disregard our skill when they ask us to sew for them, right? Um, and in general, it's a very devalued skill. And I, I kind of had, in my own way, devalued my worth as a sewist because I just felt like what I'm doing isn't helping the world. Um, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a firefighter. True heroes, you know? And here I am sewing, <laughs> you know? And... I finally just had to say, well, this is what I want to do. I, I want to help people sew and sewing is a, it's a skill. Yeah. And I love the company too, Libby. It's a skill and skills are, you know, the auto mechanic isn't undervalued. All right. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch to hold down my facing. There's two ways you can do this. If you don't want to stitch in the ditch, which means that I would start from this side and sew in the ditch of my shoulder seam right here through to the facing and it kind of holds your facing to the inside. If you don't want to do it from the right side of the garment, the other thing you can do, and I, I say I'm kind of fiddling a lot because sometimes this is not, doesn't line up the way. So I'm making sure this is all nice and relaxed and flat. Like look the collar relax here. Sometimes your shoulder seams won't line up perfectly. I'm shocked they're lining up right now. They don't usually, because here's the seam right here, right? So then you're gonna pick this up, no matter how this lines up, let the facing be relaxed. Pick this up and you can sew in the seam allowance like this. And then you don't have to do it from the right side. Also, if your fabric is really fragile, I recommend doing this, because then if you get it kind of wrong, you can take it out and do it again and you're, and you're not really hurting the fabric on the right side. It also, sometimes if you don't get it quite right when you sew in the ditch here, it will pull a little bit. And so this way, when it's on the inside, you have less of that happening there. All right, let's do the other one. I'll show you how to stitch in the ditch on this one. So this time I'm gonna start it from the right side. I'm just gonna kind of make all of this nice and flat and relaxed. Pick up the collar here, get this all nice and relaxed like this. 
get the stitches out of there. Make sure your facing is all the way to the inside of the garment and not like kind of um, ballooning up like this towards the collar. Iron it if you have to. You can pin all this too. Mine's been sewn before, so it's, it's kind of wanting to behave and it's also been stitched in the ditch. And so now I have this all the way I want it. I'm gonna put it under. It's grabbing the corner of my table. And then you're gonna pull apart this shoulder seam really hard, pull really hard. Get your needle right in there. And then uh, make sure you clip your threads. And then once this has been washed and kind of used a little bit, it kind of just disappears. You, you won't even be able to see it right there. And you probably can't see it because it's a freaking camouflage. Oh, my pin tugged blouse, that's awesome. Did we do buttons and buttonholes on that? Or did I do snaps? I did snaps, didn't I? You guys are so sweet. <laughs> the unsew machine. Watch, watch, watch again. All right, I fixed it finally. So now I don't really have, oh, that collar looks way better. Yay. Cool. Yay, one more down. Doo -doo -doo. All right, do we want to do inseam, French seam pockets or my uh, white mom hoochie top? <laughs> what choices? So I have my um, read a shirt dress here that I'm adding pockets to. This is probably what you're gonna vote for, right? Cause this one, you can actually use this skill. Let's change the thread though. All right, so I need a light blue. Done buttons and buttonholes though. I feel like I did do those recently. I have to use my th my thread thing here because I I don't have a. Well, I don't think I do. I think this is. Well, that could work. Which one do I want to wear most? Yeah, I think the pockets. All right. I guess that could work. I'm more likely to have a bobbin to match that as well. That's gray. We could put the uh, orange ones on the bottom floor. I mean, this one's close, but I know what spool that is and it's not that. I think I'm gonna use this light gray. In fact, I'm gonna use light gray on the whole thing. Light gray is the chameleon of the thread world or gray in general. Hi, Carrie, how's it going? I was thinking about you the other day because I was, uh, someone commented on a much older Facebook post and it had something to do with your birds in it. And I was like, oh, I wonder how she's doing. All right, I'm gonna get rid of these. I think it's this one. It's like a minefield. <laughs> yeah, Sydney's work's been really busy too. It, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, too wide, Sydney, like the, it was very 70s. Fine if you like the 70s, but it didn't really go with the fake liberty of London floral, you know? 
And uh, every time I wore it, I would always be like mashing it down. I was kind of self-conscious of it. Oh, I did, did I, I did tie that in a knot, okay. Oh, did she start a new project? I missed that. Libby, are you still here, Libby? I know you're probably not interested in this, but I think it's still kind of cool. Did you see that Procreate has this face paint feature? It's nuts. And you can, if you don't have the canvas that you can enable, you still have the reference in there. So you can turn on reference and then a little window pops up and um, you can put anything you want in the reference, like a photo or something else, but you can put you, like a live version of you. And when you start painting on the canvas, it shows up as face paint on you and you can move around. It's nuts. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, the Winslow's nice. Yeah, 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 collar. <laughs> I'm working through these efficiently. I spent, the Lynn, the key is prep. So after the stream yesterday, I seam ripped and seam ripped and seam ripped. I got them all to the point where, because it's, that's my, always my advice. If say you make a big mistake and you're just like, want to rage quit on your sewing. If you have it in you to at least get it back to ground zero, I think you're going to be so much more motivated to get to um, work on it. Libby, go to the Procreate Instagram and, and look a couple of in, uh, tutorials back. Now they're showing people using it, but look at the tutorial, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. All right, um, I'm, do I just maybe overlock this edge or would I like to stitch it down? All right, so we're adding Inseam pockets, if you have the Rita shirt dress and you haven't made it, add pockets to it. You will thank me. You will send me C's candy. Trust. Right, Tammy? I know, I was like, okay, I'm not, like I said, I'm not that into it, but if you have like a kid or something, like I, I, I bet um, uh, Bardot will do something. I could just edge stitch it. Maybe I'll just edge stitch it. So this is another thing you can do. So say you want to turn this, right? Sew it face down and then turn it so it lines up. Here's my little trick. All right, I'm gonna line this up. I don't have any notches, right? I'm like, where do I know where to turn it under? I could do this and then hold it, right? And then it gets a little wiggly and like, oh no, is it, if, do I have it right here at the top? You know me, I would probably just go for it, right? But here's another little trick if you need to be really precise. Make sure that you line this all up really nicely. And now I want you to notch it where you want this to fold back. So if you want to fold this edge back a quarter of an inch, we're going to clip it at a quarter inch through both layers, the pocket and the spacing. Right? And now you're going to turn it and then line up your notches Just like that. It would be really helpful if I ironed all this because it's really hard to deal with. <laughs> and then sew it, notch to notch. And then when you turn it back, it's all gonna line up perfectly. See that? There you go. It's my hack for the day. Always add pockets. Yes, exactly. Wait, this isn't lined up perfectly. Okay, just making sure. Like I said, ironing would be so key. Where's my, where's my notch? There it is. Okay. Well, that one I didn't get, oh, okay, this one I didn't get so good. <laughs> I 
I'm taking that out. We can't stand for that. Sorry I have so many boo-boos on my hand. Just don't look at them. I'm such a freaking klutz. It's terrible. I was actually thinking about this the other day because I know like hand models that, you know, like the whole like urban legend of hand models wearing gloves all the time. They must do that. That is not an urban legend. I can't even manage going a day without hurting my hands. Speaking of candy, what? Yeah, some of it's good. Some of it's okay, but it's a lot of it's stale. Whoa, I just almost moved that. Yeah, so uh, like the little uh, cats, I like those. Um, trying to think what else. Some of them are very, very salty too. And is while I love salt in general, I'm not the biggest salt black licorice fan. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, Carrie. <laughs> That's such a bummer. I think, I don't know. I'm going to look and see now that I have it ironed to see if I actually have it, um, if I just didn't do the notches very good. It was very bumpy. It may not have looked as bumpy to you guys. Okay, so that's, that's one and that's okay. I think it's, well, they look okay. Maybe I didn't sew them well. Let's get this better. It probably just moved around when I went to sew it. I notched it okay, but I didn't sew it okay. That was really what it was. Good thing we're not back stitching. It's not necessary. Not yet anyway. Bam, there we go. Okay, let's iron both of these. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> nope, wrong one. Still. The problem is I forget that now I renamed this camera Serger Cover Stitch. It should be iron. It used to be iron cam. I'm very literal. If I'm ironing here, I want it to be called iron cam. Look at that. Okay. Oh, let's iron this one too. Let's, in fact, let's iron a lot of this. Well, sorry about my microphone yesterday, you guys. I don't know why, for some reason, it says I have seven hours on this microphone, but I, I have to charge it after one stream. I feel like, uh, you know, three hours and the battery looks really low. And um, I had only recorded a short video using it, but it apparently really sapped it. And then it didn't, it wouldn't charge very fast. I need to do this from this side. I'm so excited to have hand pockets in this dress. I, I can't believe I didn't notice when I sewed this, it didn't have it. It's weird. I don't want my, my, I think my iron needs to be cleaned because lately it's occasionally doing this thing where it will drip out icky fluid. Okay, do the best I can, I can here. I could, there's no way. I've thought about going to a salon, Nancy, but I had a really bad experience when she didn't listen to me. And I ended up with this stubby little French manicure. Um, like I, I, I just said French manicure because I didn't know what to ask for and that's fine. It was the fact that my nails were all really nice and long, longer than this. And she cut them off blunt straight with no natural taper. <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> You know, I, I was horrified. And then um, then she put jewels on it and, and it was gel and I could not get it off. 
and then it ruined my nails for a year. So I, I tried to take it off and then, you can't see it, but there's some wrinkles here. And it made my nails all thin and feeble and um, they lost all their strength. It was awful. You want them where if, if everything, should I do elastic back or zipper? I don't know what you're making. Wait, I only have like jean zippers I think I have. What are you making? That Licorice International ships pretty quickly, unfortunately, Libby. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm, I'm a little close to the top up here. I probably, I might need to take out more, I'm not sure yet. And I feel a little turned around doing this, you know, late in the game here. All right, so this is the one that the palm of my hand needs to go on. So this one, so it needs to look like this in the end. Oh, I might need to, do I wanna, I'm gonna do a French seam, never mind. So this goes to this one and this goes to that one. All right, set that aside. All right, so let's get our bearings so we don't put these in backwards, right? This one goes on this one here, because then that will be the part that peaks. Okay, so if this goes to this piece here, we're gonna sew this wrong sides together first. The winds, oh, they're culottes, right? <laughs> or the shorts. All right, so if I do this here, I literally have a how-to video on how to sew French seam in seam pockets. If you need to know how to do that, go watch that video because I'm gonna struggle right now since I'm kind of doing this backwards. And I don't want you to be confused or doubt my ability because I promise I have a really good video on that. So just look for it. Um, in the how the quick how to and essential videos playlist or something like that. So, but it is on how to French seam side seam pockets. I think it, that's what it's called. And I think the picture is the in, it's inside out pants and it's a gray pair of pants with the yellow poppies on it. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with those. I would listen to what Chad's saying. Carrie, sorry. <laughs> All right, so if I do this wrong sides together first, right? Because I'm going to put the, yeah, so let's put this on. I just can't remember. Yeah, and then I clip it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's try it. I'm trying to get this as high up as possible, but I need to leave myself some space to be able to sew the perimeter of the pocket. I haven't done this yet, like put these pockets in here because I knew that it's going to be a lot more work <laughs> than if I had just done it in the first place. I guess that goes without saying, but you know what I mean. My stitch length is a little long right now. We'll change my presser, foot pressure. All right, and then we're going to enclose this, right? And then we'll have Right, and then we'll have, we'll clip that, and we'll have the pocket ready to go, right? All right, let's just do one 
first. So put these on wrong sides together first. Trim these threads here. And this one here. Look at all those threads. Like those were inside my, uh, my French seam. They were having a little party in there. Getting all kinds of crazy. Good. I'm glad you guys are entertaining yourselves since I'm kind of tryharding here and uh, I'm not being very entertaining. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to iron this and then iron this. Do you have a zipper you can steal from something else? <laughs> it's kind of dastardly, I know, but I do it. <laughs> okay, other one. I'm ensuring success because <laughs> it's this is kind of fiddly stuff but I'm trying to make it not too hard to sew but it's so much easier if I hadn't French seamed it right okay now we're gonna enclose that seam It's a lot of dress. All right. Almost to the moment of truth if I did this right. See? Yeah. Part it out. If it's something that, you know, maybe you were like, eh, maybe I shouldn't donate that. Might be able to steal the zipper. All right, so now I have, let's look at it to make sure. So here's my, yeah, so see I have my, my, uh, facing there. All right, we're in good shape. Okay, so we got to do this wrong sides together first, though. And now we can just, we're going to do the side seam. So the trick now, don't I clip this now? Wait, how do I do this again? I'm going to sew this wrong sides together. I'm going to press. Yeah, I have to clip that, don't I? I have to clip something here. I'm just going to clip this. It might be wrong. It's 
not much uh, seam allowance to work with here. I don't really want to take out too much because I'm getting up into that waste casing. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go down. Yeah, we're gonna go down this here and then around. Okay, and so let's clip this one here. Okay. Yeah, that might work. As long as you're, you know, the dress isn't worth donating or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's just an idea. <laughs> so on the first pass, oh, it's real hard. I've kind of lost where my, I can't see my seam up there. Let's try. Get all these threads out here. You know, the one thing I think I get with the 10,000 subscribers is is YouTube shorts. And I see um, Andrea from um, Soda Fit does them. I'm always watching them. It's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of like Instagram stories. So they disappear, I think, in a day or something. They're different than YouTube shorts because the YouTube shorts are permanent. Um, and they have to be under 30, under 60 seconds. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna get this seam stacked right on top of the other one. This feels funny to me, I don't know why. I think it's just because it's such a struggle. Okay, here we go. If I had done the Dahlia dress today, I would have worn that on Saturday. Now, I bet I'll be wearing this on Saturday. I, I will probably want to make another one of these dresses now that this has pockets. I'm telling you, this dress is really amazing. It's, it's just so comfortable and it fits so nicely. Um, it's flattering. It feels, it feels nice too because it's so long, you know? It's kind of extravagant that way. I think the, um, I like the one they use on the cover of the pattern envelope, the floral, but I don't think it does it justice. I think um, seeing it in a solid, you can see, you appreciate some of the details. It's got kind of, mine has that kind of safari look, you know, for better or worse. Um, it's definitely a look. Okay, come on, seam allowance. Awkward things I sew. Okay. Wow, I was really stingy on this down here. It's to take out a few more. I hate taking out a seam like that. There we go. Oh, look at that stitched seam allowance. It does exist, but I don't think I'm catching it at the top. Oh, it's just because I haven't gotten it yet. All right, cool. All right, got it. All right, so I could blend into the already stitched seam right there. All right, so now um, I know you got to clip into this corner here. Uh, let's trim some of these threads for now. Oof, look at all those. 
All right, so let's turn it to the other side. Let's double check it before we do that final seam. Okay, I think it's gonna be okay. <sighs> and we only have to do it one more time. Let's see here. But now we have this, can continue this um, French seam, side seam pocket. It won't be as clean as if I'd done it uh, when it was brand new because, you know, like, like down here, it's clipped a little bit. But that's, we're still getting it in there and it's all gonna be clean finished for the most part. I never really found a project for this fabric I used for the pocket bags, but it really caught my eye when I was there. And I was so excited because it was the first time in my life that I found a fabric store devoted to garment sewists. And I'm talking about Josephine Dry Goods in Portland, Oregon. It's been there a while. Um, it's It's been there since before sewing really has been taking off the last I'd say you know 10 or 15 years and um I was a kid in a candy shop <laughs> and so when I saw this I thought it was really special because this is a, a true shirting you know so it's this is woven these stripes but then the flowers are screen printed on but it, you can't feel it. It's just so nice. It's such a high quality fabric. But I never really found the right project for it. So you sometimes will see it pop up in some of my things like as a pocket lining or something. Okay, so this one here is a little harder to blend in because I have this casing right here. See that? Oh yeah. Come on, baby. Let's release some of these scatters too. Nice, Lynn. Ooh, how exciting. I was thinking I was gonna get my stuff out soon and start like looking it over, ironing the fabric. Um, I'm excited. I'm actually really excited. I know I've been waffling on my fabric choice because it's not very warm or cold weather-ish, but I just love it so much, I don't care. And that's the true sign, right? All right, I think I'm looking for my stitches here. So my stitches are way up here. So I may end up having to hand sew a little bit there, but we'll do our best. I don't want to clip my seam allowance there to get in there better. Okay. All right. Let's do this one pocket and then we'll see. Yeah, so everyone's welcome to do our casual blazer sew along. First week of September will be all about like cutting it out. Uh, maybe doing some prototypes and fitting and you can take your time do as much as, or as little of that as you want and then the following week on Saturday every Saturday after that we're going to sew a little bit each week it's going to be in very bite-sized chunks you know so you can catch up you can um, take your time with certain sections if you want Ooh, it's a little thick here. There's a lot going on on my table here. <laughs> And all abilities are welcome. Or maybe you don't want to do a blazer. You just want to do like a big project you've been kind of nervous about doing and you kind of want to chip away at it because that'll motivate you to get going. Go for it. We will cheer you on for sure. 
All right, here is my seam reunited. Man, my the thread matches this dress so good. Uh, and it's probably because I got this as a Needle Sharp subscription box and she gave me the thread for it. <laughs> it's just so good, I cannot see my stitches, my original stitches on here. All right, so let's define the pocket opening a little bit. Just we don't need this huge thing, so I'm gonna stitch a little bit down and a little bit up from the bottom. Okay, red tail. Look at how crooked that one looks. It doesn't look crooked on the other side, that's funny. The tension looks a little funny. Oh, what's going on here? It's all this thread. The top thread matches better than my bobbin thread, so I apparently don't have the same thread on top as I do on the bottom. That's funny. There we go. Okay, let's see. What's that? Okay, other than that, there's my new pocket, and we'll fix that other thing. Yay! I finally have pockets in this dress. Kind of small. All right, so what is this right here, though? Like, what, what's that white stuff? Do you see that white stuff? What is that? I don't know, Libby. I haven't planned anything. <laughs> Which one, um, Carrie? Your project on your Winslows? Well, maybe Barbara, um, just seeing us do it will spark something, you know? And I agree, like, I think like, like it's not the easiest to find, like it was hard for me to find a fabric that's kind of why I want to stick with what I'm what I'm doing. Oh, I went a little too high. It's this right here. That's just like, of course, this is, it's at the at the top. You know, like I have a. I'm so scared I'm gonna get too close there. And you don't like I said, you don't have to sew a blazer. You know, you don't even have to. You can just follow, watch. You know. <laughs> yeah, right, Lynn. I know. Same with hearts. Have you seen like? When Hart says, do you want us to throw in a spool of matching thread for you? Um, I've done that a few times and I'm like, oh my God, this match is so good. I'm being so con so scared to, to pull this out. Not scared, but I just, I'm like trying to do the minimal amount. I gotta take it all out though here. What? I guess I needed to trim this. Whoops. Like I said, my seam allowances have been having a party inside there while I've been wearing it all these years. Right here, let's do this too. Come here, you. Okay, that's better. Just a classic French seam raw edge poking out. That was all. Let's check the other side. I want that to blend in a little better. It's because of the pocket right here. It pulls a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit bigger seam allowance just below it. That's where the pocket ends. Okay. Yeah, you can even see. Look at that little curve there. What's up with my um, tension though? There's something going on with it. It doesn't look quite right. Let's check it out here. 
All right, I'm getting way up there again. That feels pretty good. Probably get rid of all this right here just to make it look cleaner in here. Whew. But I, this attention looks better now, but this didn't. So it's good that that was like that. There we go. I saw a thread somewhere. Here it is. I'm really tryharding, aren't I? <laughs> okay. Now I now have a pocket and see there's my little pocket lining facing there. No one will know I didn't have enough. Wait. Oh, cool, Lynn. Yeah, I mean, we did a couple other sew alongs before and it was really fun. So, ooh, a, I think I'm all about a wool blazer. I actually have one that's red. I'm all about that. What's S-Y-H-O-S? S-Y-H-O-S. -S. I don't know what that is at all. <laughs> Carry right. Yeah, I know that one. Okay, uh, one more pocket. Let's see if we can do it a little faster this time. All right, so I'm, I, you know, I, I will do one okay, and then the second one will go really badly. So let's, uh, let's set ourselves up to, for success here. All right, so this one is going to the back here and this one's going to the front here. All right, so we're gonna put this wrong sides together. And then this one's about two inches below. All right, but right there, good. We definitely learned to give it a haircut this time. Wait, that's not wrong sides together, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, it is, okay. So your heart out September, oh. I've heard of that, I never participated. What is that? Are they not doing it this year too? So I can feel the vibration of my machine and my foot pedal. It's like it's something's touching my machine. You know, like when um, your your table is touching something that vibrates and, and you, it doesn't usually, and you're like, what is that? Trim, a little haircut. I love plaid. In fact, I bought like four yarn dyes this year. <laughs> They're all two color yarn dyes. I'm like, why did I buy one of them I already owned? 
I love gingham. Yeah, they're like like the one I own, uh, already bought was gingham. So you know that Anna? Wait, no, it wasn't called Anna. Um, remember that really beautiful blouse pattern I got from the Fabric Godmother box? Remember my that did that little unboxing the other day? What was that blouse called? Anthem or something like that. Um, I, what if I did that in a gingham? Is that weird? Oh, by the way, that fabric I got that I showed off in that box, I washed it. It washed so beautiful. Like it barely looks washed. It looks so nice. I need to sew something in that before I get my next box. Oh, it's been gone for a few years. Weekly brands, but oh, that's cool. Yeah, I feel like they did that before I had so-so because I would, I would get those little notifications and I would see them. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Okay, we're gonna press the seam. Matching plaid is definitely crazy making. Oh, I just ironed that, didn't I? I need to iron. Oh, I did iron, did I iron that? I did iron that, okay. I think I did. Well, let's just make sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm such a sucker for the yarn dyed stuff. To a fault. <laughs> I also have this really great bird print um, rayon that I thought would be great for that blouse too. Okay. So I didn't end up getting to my Dahlia dress or the Amy Lou Louise shift I'm making into a tank, but those are both going to be a little bit more involved. I'll dedicate Saturday to those and I'll do the camisole. So that'll be uh, doing the self fabric. Um, around the straps and the neckband with my serger and cover stitch. What will that leave? I think that'll be everything, won't it? Are those two things, because that pile I need to, I'm gonna put some thought into. I got all these things here. Oh, I have my little yellow top. I think when I used to do French seam, uh, side seam pockets a long time ago, I would cheat and I wouldn't do this step French seam. I would just do the perimeter and the side seam, the perimeter of the pocket and the side seam. <laughs> to be fair, uh, a lot of pockets I have don't have any unraveling and I won't even sometimes surge them. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's so much of a bias curve edge to it that they're, they don't, they don't really unravel. Like the edge just d doesn't do that anyway. And they, those pockets are some, of, oh, that's, that's attached. Those are some of my favorites because they're the lowest profile ones. They're so smooth inside my garment, you know? All right, my tension looks like it's okay now. I don't know what was going on earlier. All right, so we're gonna do this uh, wrong sides together. We're gonna need to clip. You gotta clip this little seam allowance here. 
of the seam you just did so that it can relax. There's probably a more elegant way to do this. There is, I, I just, this is the way I do it. Um, let's trim a lot of this because that's what kind of got us, gave us a problem last time. Okay, I did both of those. One, two, yep, one, two. All right, and so now we're going to press all the seam allowance towards the pocket and open this out a little bit. Let me give myself a little more breathing room here. I want to blend into the seam that already exists right here. You see it in here, having a party. Oh no. <laughs> right, I think the Rita in a floral would be really nice. Maybe I have a fabric I would make. Oh, what if I did that fabric, Godmother fabric in a Rita? Ooh, that would be pretty show-stopping. All right, so here's my original seam. And so when you're doing a French seam, side seam pocket, this first, okay, we've already attached the pocket, so not this seam, but now this first pass of doing the side seam, you come down, I want to just illustrate it so you're not crazy when you're doing it. Okay, so my first seam right here is this one right here. This is my last seam right here. Okay. So this one right here, this the one that's closest to the ratty edge here, and you can see there's some stitches here from, you know, the first time I sewed this, right? So you're gonna come down, and I have these wrong sides together, and I'm gonna stack these two seams, one on top of the other, each pocket, you know, under here and here. You're gonna come down right here, and you're gonna go into the pocket over here. Not over here. Like, it seems really weird that you're doing that, but that is what you are doing because it's your first pass. And so you're gonna come down, and then pivot here, and go around, and same thing, up here you're going to pivot where it lines up with this seam here. And then when you do your next one, that's when you line up with here and you're gonna enclose all that. So you're, you're not um, doing it wrong if you feel like, wow, why am I out in the middle of this pocket? Don't think too hard on it. It's, it, it all makes sense, it is logical. It just feels kind of weird. All right, I'm gonna get this side a little bit more prepped because it's such a tight, tight quarters here with the um, waist casing here. And we're doing this wrong sides together first. You're looking at the right side of my garment here because it's wrong sides together. I stack these seams. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll go like this. I'll look inside here and I'll stack these two seams on the seam allowance. See, cause this one's a little wider than this one here. That doesn't matter. I mean, it kind of matters in some other regard, but not for what we're doing right now. We want to stack the actual seam on top of it. Don't worry about the width of the seam allowance. I'm excited, Barbara, I'm gonna do the blazer. All right, so let's get this seam stacked on top. It is fussy, fussy. This is when you get here and then you're like, oh no, my needle came unthreaded. <laughs> Mine's about to, that's why I said that. All right, so I'm gonna blend it in with that original seam. Get it, go in here, stack that pocket. Kind of dark, huh? 
Let's let's trim these uh, seam allowances. I mean uh, threads. There we go. It's so bright on my my in in light real life. Okay, so this is the side seam going up and around the bottom. Oh no, Barbara, that's a bummer. They're losing a sale. Maybe you can find uh, that pattern on like Minerva or, or Pattern Review or Foldline instead of the Vogue site. I don't know. I haven't bought a Vogue pattern in ages. I got my first Minerva order. I know I'm off right here. Yeah, let's, I wanna get that back on because I don't have a lot of seam allowance. And, uh, but it's the pattern I picked to go with one of the fabrics I got as part of being, a, what am I called? Is it an ambassador? I don't know if that's what it's called anymore, but, um, but I didn't get approved for the fabric I'd picked to go with it. So now I'm like, great, I have this pattern. I don't really, but I'll probably make it with something else maybe. Dress is heavy. It's really pulling. Checking this out, making sure it wasn't actually pulling the way it looked. All right, so now we're coming to the top side of the pocket here. This is my really cramped area. And even if you get this misaligned right here, it's gonna be okay. We're, we have a second and third chance with the next two seams to kind of uh, smooth out anything that isn't lining up. Let's see, here's my seam. Get all this smooth, fuss with it if you have to. There's my original seam, right? Right there. See, so that's what it looks like. And I don't ever, oh, the throat plate, no. You have to order the separate. Yeah, if you need that screw, in fact, I got this brand new, but the this is a Phillips and that's a flat. <laughs> Kind of funny. If you lost it, it might be in your oil pan and you can use a magnet to find it. Just thought. All right, I'm gonna trim this because I didn't, guess I didn't do a good enough job or I didn't do it at all last time. Oh, right here. Um, all right, so we're gonna clip into this corner here. <laughs> Sorry, I made that look really hard. <laughs> I'm gonna trim this a little bit. Did I do this on the other pocket? I did, right? Yeah, I remember cutting it badly on that one too. I would normally do this with a rotary knife, flat on the table. I feel a little, like, these scissors are okay. I like trimming the seam for a French seam with the rotary knife, as long as you can get the garment really flat. It just feels a little bit cleaner and like a smoother line. All right, and this seam allowance. Okay, now we're just gonna iron it and do one more seam, we're done. 
The screws in your stinger are catching the fabric. I know the throat plates could be played. Oh, well, on the, is it a home machine? They may include the screws. They don't on the industrial, but that just could be where I buy it, you know, because I usually just say, hey, Carlton, um, I need another throat plate. <laughs> they send it to me, you know? Have you ever seen my throat plate collection? <laughs> Kind of funny. Someday I will frame them. You know, some people collect thimbles. Yeah, they might include the screws. I have a feeling they don't though, to be honest. You know how they are, they, they everything is separate. Hmm. Oh, I feel that way, Barbara. I know what you mean. The whole maybe meant to be thing. Yeah, it doesn't one of those other independent places like the Fold Line or um, Minerva Pattern Review, Textilia, any of those? Do any of those sell pattern? Fold Line does. Someone bought a, uh, by the way, someone bought a wardrobe by me pattern and used my new affiliate link. And I got a little email saying I made a sale. So thank you, whoever that was. That's pretty cool. Oh, you know, I feel like I need to reply to her and I didn't. Oh, I feel bad. She sent me a cute pattern to sew. What is this right here? Is that okay? What is that? We'll get it in a second. Could use more thimbles? <laughs> Man, I needed something for all the seam ripping I was doing yesterday. My, th my thumb was getting, or my finger was getting so um, tired of pulling out threads. Okay. I'm not sure if I should worry about that. It's like one stitch. Okay, all right. Try something delightful. Is that a site? Or are you actually telling her to try something delightful? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, so we're blending into the seam that was already there. I kind of went way far down and waited too long to backstitch. I went a little high up. It'll be okay since we're gonna put our, like our pocket opening definition in there. I really wanna start thinking about things I wanna sew for the holidays. Oh, Libby, are you still here? <laughs> this is why we need Procreate Club. <laughs> um, I have an idea. I want to make stationery as a, a gift with some of my little Procreate drawings. Oh boy, I shouldn't have pivoted there. Like just for like my sister and my mom, not to sell you guys, just like silly little things like I know things my sister likes, you know, or um, wouldn't it be cute to make someone their own little stationery set? Like maybe like little notepads See, when I talk about things like this, I'm already starting to figure out how I'm gonna get it done because I've done that before. I did it for one of my egg crate clubs. Um, all right, let's do my pocket definition. So I was thinking it would be kind of cute to give her like a few different kinds of notepads and same with my mom, you know, different styles. You could maybe even find somewhere that does envelopes to match, wouldn't that be cute? Okay, my machine does not like the thickness of that. That's why it was being pushed away and I might get that bump again. All right, let's see how it looks.
Oh, that is a website. Oh, Sydney, I'm sorry. It's a site for something delightful. I've never heard of that. Really, Terry? I know I love notepads, exactly. There we go. Look at how different this color of this fabric is. But no one will know it's inside. Yay! I now have pockets on my Rita shirt dress and you don't and you don't. No. <laughs> oh, you were Terry? Ooh, you got the skills. I used this kind of um, like just a printing site and, and uh, got notepads made once and they were really cute. I'm still using them and I just did a really quick little clip art on them. Okay, got one little thread here. I need to investigate that because it's coming from this weight. I want to make sure it's not anything but the dress. Where was that? Was that right here? I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Don't you think we do so much in our life assuming that someone's going to look at this in the future and go, oh, this is what happened here, or why did they do that? I have come to the realization a long time ago that I'm not special enough that I'm going to be excavated or anthropologically interesting at all. So no one's going to know that I did, you know, 12,000 stitches right here. Right? There's no sewing police. There's no sewing anthropologist uh, looking at my Rita shirt dress. So, cool. I'm so happy. This dress takes a lot of ironing to wear, if you haven't noticed. But look at that. I, I didn't say anything about back to school. Wait, did I say something back to school? Oh, do you need to be? You probably do. Your kids are probably going to school soon. Yay! Okay, the, the, the knit pillow over there, every time I catch a glimpse of it, is really tripping me out. Oh, sorry. Like, from far away, doesn't it look like it's been knit? It's the pearl side, <laughs> you know? Like, it's really a trip. <laughs> This is real knitting and this is printed. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty funny. Oh man. All right, I'm gonna do the top. I told myself I was gonna be done after that, but I'm gonna finish this. So that's what all the com pattern companies accept simplicity are under now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that sounds nice, Terry. Embrace the wrinkles! Except for the placket. The placket was just a little too wrinkly, you know? <sighs> All right, so... Oh! <laughs> yeah. Sydney, perks of being 50 here to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to rub it in any moment I get because I've, I've already gotten, I've graduated from your, your stage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, the one thing I, one rule I made for back to school with my daughter was that she was allowed to buy like maybe one outfit before school started because um, what happens is they buy only summer outfits and then October hits and they're freezing and you've already blown your whole back to school budget. So I, I and I'm like, look, you're going to have like new clothes in October. Nobody else will. <laughs> um, none of these threads match. What did I do before? I wonder. Like it really matched well, look at that. It really matched well. Huh. Hmm. I mean, 
I'm looking at these. Yeah, I will, Libby. I have the two that are kind of an intensive. Uh, they have that Dolly dress and the Amy Louise shift. You did, Libby? That's awesome. What'd you do on the back of it? Oh, that's my hair. None of those will work. Um, get my, I have one more thread thing, but I think it's all lighter weights. Yeah, I don't think any of these will work. Shoot. Maybe that one there, but that's a uh, thread for a silk needle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she skipped an entire size. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like they lost a year. It's literally like kids like lost a year. It's so crazy. Oh, look at all these top stitching threads I have. I forgot about those. Maybe I'll just use cream. Cream works for everything in my opinion. I've had these things for so long. They're really handy. If you're looking for a way to organize a lot of thread and, and you can uh, hang them on the wall. Um, yeah, I think I'll just do cream. Not ideal. Okay, Libby, I'll check it out. I see almost all DMs. I think some, when someone has never DM'd me and they do, I think it takes a few days to get it. I feel, I, I can tell. And sometimes I get questions that are kind of complicated and I read it and I think about it and I don't open it until I know the what I want to say because um, uh, I don't want them to see that I've read it and I haven't replied, you know? Oh, you're kidding me, this is all I have. Who has, oh, I have another one here. I was gonna say, who has been a bad girl and doesn't have two cream bobbins? Yeah, I'm not talking about doing crazy stuff for Christmas either. I just wanted to like ease into it. You know, and we're not really big Christmas folks, but we like to give gifts, so why not, right? All right, so I'm gonna French seam this. Oh, I'm gonna iron it first too because um, it's funky. These are all my scraps. These are the two pieces I'm gonna sew in. Let me tell you when I say that sewing linen knit that's embroidered with mesh on it, not my first choice to sew. Oh, those are just from Joanne Fabrics. I got them probably with a 40% off coupon, so I've obviously made them uh, the money money stretch far. I got them a very long time ago, and I, I'm pretty sure the last time I was there, I saw them still there. And they are kind of nice because um, if you have a lot of thread, if you, if you can just put it on one of those little like wooden spool racks, those are really nice. I've had one of those too but it just wasn't big enough. And those, you need a table or wall space to hang, to, to uh, be able to use it. These, at least I can just put these on the shelf if I don't have wall space. But at my old studio, I did have them on the wall. You guys just couldn't see them. They were just off to the side. And they're just for all those smaller spools. The bigger spools do not fit in there either, just so you know. Only the skinny ones. Maybe they make one that fits the bigger spools. They didn't at the time. Bigger spools weren't as common either. I'm not talking cones, I'm just talking about the bigger spools. 
I think those kinds of little things, it's so hard to spend the money on those things when you're kind of starting to build your sewing room because you'd rather spend your money on like fabric or something like fun like that. So it's kind of like when you own a house and you buy new windows and you're, you're like, oh my God, no one even can even tell we got new windows, but we're so happy. We just spent all this money on something no one will be able to notice but us, but now our house is warmer and, and it looks more cohesive or whatever your reason is for getting windows or a new roof or something that is like those invisible expensive things like a new garage door or whatever. Thread cases are the same thing, I think, because it's a quality of life thing. And quality of life things you just can't put a, you know, a dollar amount on even as a sewist. My Streamlabs notifications are way too much today. Have you guys noticed that? <laughs> it's a black bag with a binder clip. Yeah, those empty, pa yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. I had one of those and then um, it broke and I limped along using it still and it was just like, finally I had to go, you know, we're a big girl now. <laughs> we don't have to use this little thing. And um, yeah, this is our profession. So we owe it to ourselves to up our thread holding game. I had to have a little pep talk with myself, you know? Sometimes you gotta do that. All right, so I'm going to just French seam these in. Wrong sides together first, and this is my plan. This is gonna add about two and a half inches, like an inch in each side more. And if I do a nice enough job and I don't like it, I'm donating it. I'm giving myself permission to donate it. I'm not even gonna keep it for the cool trim. Oh, the cream thread's terrible. Why are, do I have all these Streamlab notifications today? They've been kind of crazy lately. doing the smallest of small. The reason I'm doing French seams as well is because the serger seemed a little too chunky for this originally. And I do think um, with the mesh and stuff, I was probably trying to make it nice. I don't know. I'm just sticking with it. I don't have thread to match at the serger either. Okay. So I have a funny story to tell. <laughs> it's a short one. <laughs> the other night, I brushed my teeth with Neosporin <laughs> twice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right, so this is going to, I'm gonna wrap this around like this. And then when it is done, Wait, am I? I'm not going to yet. So the reason I did this was because, so you know how I'm staying in my daughter's old room? So she left behind a tube of toothpaste and it was almost gone, but it has one of those like little flip tops on it and mine doesn't have that. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this top off and I put it on my toothpaste. How is this leading to me brushing my teeth with Neosporin? <sighs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I never turn the light on. It's really rare I turn the light on in the bathroom. I don't know why, it's just funny, especially at night when I'm going to bed or anytime I'm using the bathroom during the day, all right? So I, I don't, I just, I, I don't like the bright light um, and it just, you know, I'm about to go to bed or whatever. There's enough light from the hallway I, that I can brush my teeth without turning the light on. You know, I can still see a little bit. But it was a little darker this night because I had turned the, the stairwell light off and I, it, was, it was just a little, very little. Okay, so I put the toothpaste on my toothbrush and I started brushing and I was like, oh, it must have fallen off my toothbrush. In retrospect, I did 
kind of taste something that reminded me of Neosporin, but it didn't click until later on when I actually realized what had happened. So then I did it, I added more toothpaste to my toothbrush. At this point, I'm like, no, what did I just do? And so I, I realized what happened was I had put the Neosporin tube next to it because of my boo-boo here, my little burn from my wand. And it has a flip top. And so because I'm so, I'm used, I'm like not used to my toothpaste having flip top. So when it does, the flip top, I'm like, oh, I have this fancy new flip top on my toothpaste tube. You guys, the Neosporin cap is this big around. The toothpaste cap is, is tiny. I don't know why I was equating with the flip top and whatever. I was, it was late. I was tired. It was dark. So then I um, was like, wow. Yeah, I just did that. And so I... I'm trying to clean my mouth out <laughs> and I tried to clean off the Neosporin off my toothbrush, which was just sitting on the tops of the bristles, which was great. But then it got all over my hand and it was so hard to get off. Oh my gosh. It was like trying to wash off petroleum jelly. Um, so yeah, it made a good story. I didn't even tell my husband till today. <laughs> I told Cricket yesterday morning though, I texted her, I'm also, I brushed my teeth with Neosporin twice. <laughs> oh. Michael's reaction was like, are you gonna be okay? Like, <laughs> is that okay? It was fine. I didn't really like get deep into it. Surprisingly, you, it's not as flavorful as you would think. So I, it did take me a bit to notice. And man, I brushed my teeth good after that. I have to go to the dentist next week. They're gonna love this story. All right. I thought I'd share that with you guys. <laughs> All right. A little wavy there. I need to trim this. This is, see, this is the problem. Is like every time I do French steam, like I'll trim a little bit. <laughs> right? Hi, Julie. How's it going? Yeah, I know, right? I am just such a nerd that way sometimes, Anne. I just am so. Bowl in a china shop. That is me. Oh well. Whoops. Oh sheesh. I got really close there. That'll be okay though. Man, it takes a lot of time refashioning everything, doesn't it? But at least today, I feel like I don't really have to spend a whole lot of time on all these um, makes. I know I should do a Friday sews, but I really want to do how-to videos and I'm working on them, but I don't have any time off camera. Right after your vacation? You can tell my story and pretend like it's yours, Carrie. <laughs> this makes me a little nervous trimming all this, okay. I really don't want it to be bulky. That's why I am too. Let's see how it looks. Wait. <gasps> no! Oh my god! <laughs> I just did that to the side seams. <laughs> Look. I hate this shirt. I shouldn't have told my story. Oh my gosh, look at what I did. <laughs> I can't even tell. This is the neck. I, it was supposed to be to this one. All right, bye. <laughs> oh man. I can't fit into that. 
Oh, okay. I guess I need to eat lunch. <laughs> I was telling a story. That was where I went wrong, Eliza. Okay, well, you have to tell them, Carrie, that, you know, the flip top thing, it's dark. I've got literally have my hand on the mouse to be like, bye. That's how my brother says it now. It's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> right, Julie? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, ew. That's why we don't have nice cups or glasses. I finally, I have two here at the office. This was one. Total, like, um, brewery glasses, you know. We've all seen these at, like, restaurants. I bought it at a restaurant place. I had two. That's it. And um, I only had them at the office just so I had a couple water cups here. for One for me and one for Rayanne. And um, I, once I closed that office, I brought one of them home. And I'm always looking for it. I love it. And you, you literally could throw that thing and it won't break. It's great. And we have a lot of pint glasses. But my husband has a lot of, like, commemor commemorative pint glasses that are special. And I've broken so many of them. It's terrible. And it always, it always seems like it's passive aggressive, too, because I swear... I have almost broken one of his glasses every time he's out of town. I don't know how. I, I really don't mind him going. I love being home alone. I don't know. It's terrible. I feel terrible. And every time he gets home, there was a point where he was like, he would look at the glasses to see if I'd broken any. And I just felt so terrible. A couple times I replaced them before he got home. Uh, but... um. We saw more of those when we were in uh, Oregon recently, and my husband's like, yeah, we should get some of those. 20, there's probably a converter, Barbara. I would say that's about $18. <sighs> I'll seam rip this. It won't take long, and then I'll finish it later. You get the gist of this. Who cares about this thing? All right, I'm gonna head out though. Okay, so let's recap. What do we get done? Let's feel the accomplishment. Is this all I did? I made a pillow with a funny, you can't tell which is real, which is the real knitting. I fixed my Yanta overalls. I fixed my collar. And I have pockets in my Rita shirt dress. We're doing good. I'll see you guys Saturday. <laughs> I'll be uh, fixing those two garments. Um, I'll be filling in the armhole. So you can kind of see how I'm going to solve that because it will be a weird, unique solution to make that Amy Louise shift actually fit the armholes for sleeves. I like the idea... Um, was it Aisha yesterday? Say, someone suggested, maybe it was Penny Pinch, that I do like a little ruffle around the armhole. I almost like the idea of that. I don't have anything like that, so maybe I would do that. I'm going to think about that. Because I, I did cut the bottom of that uh, off, so I have a bunch of fabric. So I have some fabric I can do it with. I didn't have enough fabric to do the inside facings that are in gingham or the pockets when I made that dress, and that's why they're in gingham. And now I have all this bottom fabric, <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Um, I might even um, fix the, the fact that you can see part of my pocket opening at the bottom of that garment. So, <laughs> the Rocky theme song. <laughs> oh, man. 2968. Oh, it's more. Oh, the pound's doing pretty good. What the heck? I thought it was the opposite. Are you still looking for that pattern, Barbara? All right, well, I hope you guys uh, enjoy my crazy stream today. My camera been off that whole time. You guys can tell me, you know. <laughs> Oi, there we go. All right, I'll see you guys Saturday. <laughs> Maybe I'll have an uploaded video for you tomorrow too. Thanks for coming, and um, if you're new here, you think about subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the like, leave me a comment, do all that fun YouTube stuff. It really helps people, or YouTubers at least. And um, if you ever want to chat with us, just log into YouTube or create an account, 
and you can look, chat with us. So I'll see you guys Saturday, same time, same place, and um, we'll, I'll finish up my refashioning next week. I'm kind of excited about what I'm doing next week, so I'll see you guys soon. Yeah, nice seeing you again, Carrie. It's been a bit, and we got to see Judith today, too. That was great. So bye, guys.